Crunchyroll's a million dollar success from Mr. Totolini. Let's see what he has to say about this one. I see a thumbnail with uh, Kafka in it. Sorry, uh, Kaiju. So let's see what if he's going to talk something good about this. With anime becoming a global success, everyone and their mother wants a slice of the pie, the same way cats want fish. <laughs> Meaning there's that much okay. more anime for us, the viewers, but also so much more competition. Thus, it's no surprise that Crunchyroll, the biggest anime streamer in the West, would choose to promote the absolute shit out of whatever it considered to be the next big hit. And yep. Kaiju number eight is just that anime. I know, yes, this is a nipple piss. And I know that we watched the recent video about, you know, Kaiju Wade's downfall and blah, 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 stuff like that. But that wasn't really talking about the amount of DVD sales or stuff like that, right? When I talk about performance on YouTube, it really doesn't really have much association with how well the sales actually do. Not in terms of Japan, but a global audience as well. Obviously, there is some sort of coefficient factor, some sort of scaling. And if the reactions, you know, on YouTube are getting less views, that means that it doesn't necessarily mean a lot of people don't want to watch it, but... The, there is still more of like if an anime is super hype and a lot of people are talking about it, their views go up. If it's not, it kind of goes down, you know? I wonder what, how Kaiju 8 did. This is the funniest shit I've ever seen. Wearing its Attack on Titan, My Hero, and Fire Force inspiration on its sleeve ensured that it would come out the gate swinging, but the stellar anime adaptation Kaiju has received led to the crafting of the perfect anime cocktail to create one of the best anime this year. At least this is so funny. Like, the duality of man, you know? The other video was like, Kaiju 8 is actually trash. And this guy's like, Kaiju 8 is the best thing ever. Now, the other guy's video was based upon points from the manga where things do go downhill. And we're just specifically talking about season 1. And he did credit season 1 being a pretty good season, right? Until the weird ass deer anime comes out. Hot take. Nokotan, as of episode 4, is the most overrated anime this season because they're simply. They're. They're. Six, they're this is, um. What's it called? You're having problems because you got too successful promoting the virality of the brain rot content through the openings and the visuals, but now people are realizing that that shit kind of passed on by episode 2, and now it's just character introductions and Koshitan's reactions to that, and not enough screen time of Nokotan doing her crazy shit that people wanted to watch it for, so. Straight up, Nokotan is actually overrated. If you consider overrated as people hyping something up and not getting the level of attention and engagement it deserves after it launched. So of course, Crunchyroll guaranteed it'd be massive by giving it the royal treatment like it's never done before. From airing it live on Twitter to having a special live stream. Roshiteri is mo most overrated to you? Yeah, but I think your definition of overrated is different. I'm talking pure numbers and pure like opinions and speculations online while people are commenting. You probably just don't like it personally. While everyone's enjoying it, the numbers are up, right? That's like a personal preference. You can individually think that Roche is overrated, but everything else otherwise suggests that it is simply meeting expectations and exceeding the hype. In fact, I don't think there was even that much hype for Roche compared to Nokotan heading into the season, right? There was a lot of manga readers that were excited, but not to the level of Nokotan. If you compare it to, it's fucking... It's crazy how stark the contrast is. Dreamcast premiere for every new episode, and even giving it its very own countdown timer. So basically, everything Netflix didn't do for Record of Ragnarok. Microwave. Anything that Netflix or Disney touches turns to shit. I fucking hate what they did with the batch releases. Part of the hype, part of the culture surrounding anime is watching something on a weekly basis, drip feeding it and then engaging with the community, talking about your favorite moments of the episode, discussing theories, and having something to look forward to. That's half the fun. Having something fun to look forward to. When you have this batch release that you just drop everything out, the hype is dead. No one even knows it's fucking happening. It's the fastest way to kill hype for a show, bro. Didn't that happen with JoJo's Part 6? All things that are foreign for a typical anime, as some of them literally don't even get licensed despite their high quality, but I'm not here to tell you that Kaishu doesn't deserve it, because goddamn does it, as it truly feels like a proper new gen anime with what it chooses to take inspiration from, while also mm. filling the gap left behind by the coming departure of manga like My Hero Academia and Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> what? I don't remember this scene in the Shibuya incident? Fun fact, that's not really spoilers, and if you think that it's spoilers, now you shouldn't do this, but the Wikipedia page for Nobara, the status of her character, it's not confirmed dead, so just, just something to be, but yes, after 
you know, my, my hero is airing right now, right? I'm sure Kaiju aired last season, but like, it was nice to have something hype along the way. I mean, no, Demon Slayer was also airing at the same time, but you know, Hashira training arc was not as exciting for some of the earlier episodes. The last one was fucking peak, but it was nice to have Kaiju aid on a weekly basis to fill that Shonen scratch. Nice. It starts Banger. with a slow open that really sells the details of the world without a lick of dialogue, exemplifying that it knows perfectly well how to show and not tell, merely by displaying that all of the stop signs have a sign specifically for Kaiju before I didn't even... Oh yeah, they do have that. Kaiju alert, Kaiju alert. Signs have a sign specifically for Kaiju before then having a giant alligator monster emerge and start wrecking the city. Hey wait, that's just... Florida. And because it's Florida, the crack fiends... Is that true? I don't live in Florida, but maybe some people do. All I know about Florida is about Florida man who is the craziest person possible. I know it's, it's, it's basically a title. It's not a single entity. It's hot as fuck. It's like a swamp. I hear Fort Lauderdale is fucking lit. That's pretty much all I know about Florida. Also, Precious Anime. That's his home base. Swoop in to defend their precious utopia from the vicious gator under the name of the Defense Force because crackheads need jobs too, all while some epic and fitting music play in tune with this device. Yes! And then later, the music was fucking sick. The bass drops were all the soundtracks, man. Later, the main character cleans up his shit. True. The they censored part that. about this show is that it focuses on Kafka, a 30-year-old loser who's given up on his dreams and resigned himself to be a janitor. No, it's not you, bro. You're not the loser who gave up on your dreams to become a janitor. I feel like you probably, you know, dropped his fucking job too and started doing YouTube and chasing his dreams. I feel like, um, I wonder what he's gonna say about Kafka, because, like, a lot of people are upset that Kafka doesn't act as a traditional 32-year-old would. He's just acting as if any, you know, any shonen protagonist who's like a high school would. Instead, this time, they're just slapping the age on it so that they can cater towards that demographic that grew up watching Legacy shonen series and now has a character that they can relate to and not just fucking deku you know rather than focusing on your usual younger 16 year old protagonist but that's what makes kafka unique because he's already told himself that he can't succeed and has accepted the fact that his life is a nothing burger which is something a lot of people of any age can relate to just like yes that. very relates i get it i get it totally we'll give you a plug later on i get it i get it but the whole thing about you know who decided that for kafka right who decided that you could not live up to your dreams? He gave up. He settled for comfort. And he realized that, it's, you know what? Maybe I'll just stop having expectations because failing hurts too much. And that's up to you at the end of the day. Everyone decides for themselves what their own limits are. Button, but the anime still introduces the more typically aged protag in the form of Reno, who convinces Kafka to give crack. I mean, the defense force. I would honestly say Reno is more mature than Kafka, right? 16 year old kid with 32, they're like double the age. Reno was fantastic. I didn't think that like he could be a character that could keep up with Kafka because Kafka has crazy monster powers. But they proved me wrong, and Reno is like, actually a fantastic sidekick. It's one more try after forming the most adorable friendship with him. And that's honestly where most stories would carry forward from, but then Kafka gets thrown by whatever this is. Ugh, what's yeah. that, brother? Turn Kaiju 8? It's the precursor to Kaiju 8. I don't know. Oh. Turns into a Kaiju and then decimates his opponents. <laughs> Yeah, she gets wild. The best part is that all of that happens in just the first episode, and it only yeah. gets better from there while maintaining- Yes, the pacing of this show is fucking crazy. There is not one slow episode. The slowest episode is the one where we're celebrating for about like five to seven minutes, eating like wagyu, you know, fucking uh, dinner, because we like, we just cleared a mission, and then as soon as that's done, immediately we get invaded, right? That shit was so fast, it was so hype. Being the same core concepts it introduced with Kafka and Reno, delving deeper into its large cast of characters while continuing to play with its show-not-tell motif by introducing a bunch of them at one time, knowing that you won't care about any of them except for this one, give her a little bit of that Huck. Before quickly remedying that by showcasing their rivalries amongst each other, effectively pairing them up because it serves as an easier visual way to remember all of these different people and grow attached to them because of the different ways they play off each other, while simultaneously being a perfect way to develop their characters without putting the story on hold to give each one a sad backstory. <laughs> this is the Deku memes! It was the, uh, you too can work minimum wage, right? Friars on, 100%. The MHA memes just keep going. Um, this is an interesting thing he said about how they're able to... You know how we just said about Nokotan being mid and the issue was the, the introduction of the character and forgetting about what people really wanted, which was, you know, Nokotan's, you know, reactions on everything, or rather, what Nokotan does and the crazy shit. 
Kaiju Wait, now that I think about it, they did introduce these characters, but they never. How dare an ambulance fucking go off beside my building while I'm fucking talking about anime? These selfish motherfuckers. I cannot believe that they think they're more important than us talking about Kaiju 8 right now. L ambulance. But, um, what was I gonna say? I think I was saying something along the lines of Kaiju 8 did a fantastic job in introducing the characters as, as just as necessarily as it needed while keeping it hype, keeping the good pacing going, and then saving the backstories for later. Want a sad backstory? And when they do opt to give you a deeper dive, it's done quickly and seamlessly. Like how they tell you everything you need to know about Kafka in the first nine minutes of episode one, while never missing a beat and still world building at the same time, illustrating all the while that he's just like every other burned out late 20 year old, saying how life isn't bad. <laughs> late 20 year old instead of early 30 year old. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing, Totalini. That bad because he can eat and buy whatever he wants, consistently trying to look on the bright side no matter how. But that whole logic of oh it's not so bad i got a roof over me i can eat take out whenever i want life is comfortable why do i have to be a hero i feel like i'm fine with who i am and honestly it's up to you to decide that right everyone decides for themselves what they should be settling for and if you've decided that this is the extent of your life then so be it that's all you're gonna get your life is gonna be proportional to the amount that you invest into yourself and kafka realizes no it's not over for me just yet, and this is a great message to send to those people who are figuring out their different passions and dreams later on after sleeping as a walking zombie, just working 9 to 5 corporate jobs, just like me. Child is the reason he comes up with, despite the fact that he constantly looks back and regrets his decisions, yet never has the willpower and confidence to move forward and try again, unless it's for her. It's able to capture so much in so little time because it knows how to use its visual medium to its fullest extent, in tandem with proper pacing, respecting your time while also showing you that it deserves your time. At no point info dumping you details that you can't naturally pick up by watching, like the difference between a Honju and a Yoju. One's bigger than the other! Yeah, <laughs> big monster, small monster. Monsters have cores, crazy shit, right? Instead, respecting your intelligence and allowing you to figure it out, just like I respect you clicking the like button. And that's in addition to its subtle world building in Kaiju lore, where it drops several clues for how long the Kaiju have been around, but never directly exposits those details to you. Because Right, and like, they're introducing obviously the number series, that's like the weapons based off of these like numbered Kaijus, but it is, it is so cool how they're kind of like holding off the lore and all that shit why there even exists and like the fact that the monsters are evolving and becoming more intelligent and creating even stronger kaijus figuring it out naturally is like finally beating an elden ring boss let's go we dragons and that's very easy to do okay. when they drop hints and character backstories that they've been fighting them for centuries which begs the question as to what exactly were the kaiju doing during 2001 i don't know how because we don't have that lore right like we need to figure out how did all this shit happen? But stuff like that in the Shonen show is only going to be explained during like the end end game. The final arcs or the final saga. <gasps> A second plane just hit the North Tower. The production is largely what contributes. That's a 9-11 meme. To this all being possible when coupled with the foundation that is the manga, with expressive character animation that really helps accentuate the comedic scenes and a penchant for 2D kaiju to the point of rarely utilizing CG. Yes, I love that. Again, if you have any show where the majority of the entertainment comes from the action scenes and not really much of the dialogue, you cannot be fucking around with the CGI, right? They need to be well drawn. Going even further beyond with directing that makes great use of POV shots to illustrate distance, while doubling as a clever way to not fully animate the kaiju, in addition to more unique angles like the twix to kaiju's decapitated corpse. Are you sure about that? By putting meticulous I don't care and detail into every facet of the anime, just about every scene is amplified. Whether it be the OST having badass guitars to kill monsters too in one scene, or an ever so slight musical homage to Godzilla's iconic theme in another. And the way it precariously balances so many tonally different things at once is in a league all its own. Like how it goes from some of the best comedy you'll see in a shonen anime, to a scene straight up. Is it? Is, is Nipple Piss really the best comedy that we've seen in a shonen anime? Maybe. It was pretty funny. I'm not gonna lie. There's something... It's, it's a very... Like, you know, people fart, poopy jokes. It's very surface level. It's extremely low-hanging fruit, right? But 
Sim simple doesn't mean bad humor. Sometimes, like, everyone can just relate to it. So, like, nipple piss was pretty funny. To a scene straight out of a horror film in a genre you'd never expect it from. With the framing of a crying girl, her dying mom, and a hungry monster being so well done that you can't help but feel a sense of dread and fear for the worst, putting you directly in the character's shoes right but I don't know. I've seen just too many anime where it's just like, yeah, they're not going to fucking die. Come on. Kafka's going to show up. Well, where is he? Oh, there's Kafka. What do you know? Where the hero swoops in and saves the day like a total badass, perfectly representing what a shonen anime is. Okay, that was pretty funny. I forgot these scenes. I forgot these earlier episodes where like he's trying to like smile and like look nice be funny to kids but every time he do that he traumatized them representing what a shonen anime is and what makes this show so great you, the fact that the animation he's very self-aware he totally is very self-aware that what he's doing right now is just basically just glazing doing tricks off of it just deep throwing kaiju -y. but that's the purpose of this you know this video the theme is frontal success due to kaiju 8 the fact that the animation barely drops in quality as it goes on is not only rare, but also icing on the cake. Yes, and another anime that aired in tandem during this season that had the opposite effect, where the animation literally fell apart as it reached the finale, New Gate. If you want to see an anime where it is the perfect mid-anime, just 5 out of 10 throughout the entire fucking season, except that one fight, that one fight with this friend was really, you know, it was very fucking good. Thank you for the five gifted subs and anonymous gifter. That's a very generous of you. Thank you so much. But hey, if you want to see a true fucking mid anime that falls apart, literally the animation falls apart, watch Newgate. Leaving the anime with very few flaws to the point where most criticism stems from the immature way in which Kafka acts. Right. This is the talking point that a lot of people bring up about how Kafka is immature and is simply another high school, middle school male protagonist shonen show, but instead it has been reskinned to a 32 year old in order to package and market that to an older audience that grew up watching those old shonen shows. And to that, I say this. I think there's a lot of people that don't understand what 30 year old people behave, right? I think a lot of people think that once you hit a certain age that you're supposed to just turn to Joe Biden as if like 19 year olds think that if you turn 30, you're done, your life is over. I've seen plenty of people in their 30s act immature and I've seen plenty of people in their 20s act more mature in their 30s. Perfect example is Reno. Reno and Kafka. I think that there's an opposite, you know, gap of age, right? 1632. Yet Reno is more mature, level-headed than Kafka. And Kafka is just this bright, earnest, outgoing guy who's trying to be with the culture. I don't think that him acting the way he is in the anime is something that is so bad that ruins the immersion or some sort of experience. I think that he's a good representation of what a 32 year old might be in an anime like this. Despite his age, but that's not an objective innate flaw of the series as it's been established that Kafka is the jolly uncle always looking on the- Exactly. Jolly uncle type. He's always trying to be high energy and get everyone involved. He's just, he's just a good person. He's just an excited good person who's not boring. Right side and having fun with the kids, but not like Dr. Disrespect. Hey, you know Jesus. Jeez. No, we, we, we are her stepdad, okay? This is not a ship. Everyone shipping Kafka and Kikoto, you guys are fucked. It's all about stepdad-daughter relationship. He's the dad that stepped up because her own dad is fucked up. Hey, Dr. Disrespect. Hey, you know they got your mans. They got your mans on sex assault charges. Jesus. That isn't to say the anime is perfect, as there are some flaws, but they're rather small. Such as in this scene where the anime visually communicates that Best Girl was looking for approval from her father and hints that she's neglected, which explains why she latches onto the father figure in Kafka. Mm -hmm. Hi, Daddy. All through just a few words of dialogue in the expression she's wearing, yet they then still opt to give her a flashback anyway to verbally explain it when it really wasn't needed. But even that is more nip. Nah, exactly. He knows it's nitpicking, right? The whole show don't tell, you know, portion was already done, but obviously having more f just you this show don't tell and then you can actually tell and flesh out what they showed. Nitpicking than anything and matters very little in the grand scheme of things, especially when it's so Hype. It constantly subverts your expectations and the tropes of the shonen genre by never delivering on the hype moments when you expect them to. Yes, this specific episode when the vice captain was almost pretty much done and I thought he'd be out and Kafka would come up and show his favorite everybody. No, it didn't happen. The rest of the team showed up. In fact, Hoshino kept fighting because Hoshino is different, bro. His suit was already done, limiter off. Like the, like it was, he, he should have been out of the battle, but he kept going through it. And then 
I'm like, when are they doing this? When is Kafka gonna come to show up and say the day? At the very end, when the entire audience was gathered. That was actually such a brilliant way to do it and subverted my expectations. Showcased in just about every scene where you're waiting for Kafka to transform and save the day, but he just doesn't. Which is great because it allows for other characters to flourish. Best yeah. exemplified by the anime hyping up Best Girl and then properly delivering on that hype with all of her respective badass moments. Something that's very refreshing when so many anime tend to make excuses for their main character to show off instead of allowing them to be a loser underdog like kaiju does Gut. when it does finally feed into the tropes it does so masterfully with some of the coolest battles you'll ever see from screaming away and attack naruto style to fighting through a town aot style wearing hoshina fight scenes were such a it was just eyegasm man Every time he was fighting, bro, holy. A town AOT style, wearing its inspirations with pride. And when coupled with the fact that the anime can be both a well thought out story told with intention and a pure action hype shonen, it ensures that you'll never grow bored. Well, yes, for season one. But I hear that after this material is ended and the content we're going to get from season two, it's going to be interesting as they, you know, change the release schedule from weekly to bi weekly or maybe even monthly. I forget. And it's different though, because we're doing anime and we have a lot of material to work with. So even if the pacing in the manga may have been an issue, it might be still hype. We'll have to see. A lot of people are being very doomer about Kaiju 8 success, uh, sorry, um, future success. Season 1 was amazing, but we'll have to really see when season 2 comes around to see, is it really that legit as we go into, you know, the mid game on Beyond? Making it not only one of the coolest shonen anime you'll ever watch, but also a modern day classic. That was a great video. My first time watching Totalini, and I think we just found a new channel to farm videos off of. He, I love anime video essays, stuff like this, of content that we've seen. Please go to his channel, like his video, and I'll see you guys on the next one.